You are listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAZ Radio. Welcome to the Bitter Medicine Podcast, where it's all about black empowerment. Our show focuses on black news and entertainment, arts, science, economics, history, people, and strategies that uplift, empower, and motivate Africans within the diaspora. And now, your host, whose favorite color is black, Goku. Welcome everyone back to the Better Medicine Podcast. This is your host, Cuckoo. And today I wanted to come to you after having just seen the new War of the Planet of the Apes movie. Now I'm sure you guys have heard some things already. I know Tariq Nasheed tweeted about the fact that uh, <clears throat> it seemed that D. Ray McKesson from the Black Lives Matter movement is being depicted as an ape in the film. And I'll talk more about that later. Um, but when I went in, as I tend to do with certain genres of films, I go in and I look at the allegory. I look at what are they trying to say without saying it. You see that, um, for example, we, we kind of knew this for years. If you're a comic book fan, you know that the X-Men was based on black folks and the civil rights movement. And in recent years, Stan Lee has admitted that um Stanley has admitted that the characters Professor X and Magneto are based on um Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X respectively. So when I go into these films I, I try to keep my third eye open so to speak when I watch and I try to see what's being said, what are the what's the warnings, what are the hints that could help us in our lives today. And this movie, War of the Planet of the Apes, does not disappoint. Um, If you know, or if you don't know, um, War of the Planet of the Apes is one of the reboot, one movie in the reboot of the Planet of of the Apes movies that was based on a 1960s movie called The Planet of the Apes starring Charlton Heston. So, back in the 60s when they made that film, it was understood generally that the apes were representative of black people. And if, you don't, if you're not familiar with the story, in the original movie, um, it's essentially Charlton Heston and some other astronauts crash land on a planet, and... On the planet, they find that humans, who were mostly all white, were mute and were being um, enslaved by a planet of apes. And the story is all about him trying to get free from uh, the bondage of, you know, the bondage from these apes. There were a few sequels to the movie. Not all of them had Charlton Heston in it. There was a TV show for a while, and I actually was a fan of it as a kid, and I know a lot of black folks were fans, in fact, one of the, either the writer, screenwriter, or director, one of them even remarked on how ironic it was how much black folks liked the movie, considering the movie is really calling black folks apes. So has anything really changed from nineteen from the mid-60s to now? as far as this uh, Planet of the Apes franchise goes, no, very little. Very little. So let's pick up on um, War of the Planet of the Apes. I'm, and I'm going to give one or two slight spoilers here, but I think it's good to give these slight spoilers because I think it will be a good thing for you to go in to the theater with your third eye somewhat open. And I'll be interested to see if you listen to this and then you go and you see the film. I'll be interested to see if you see or saw what I saw. So, the story picks up with Caesar, who's the leader of the apes. 
They're all living in a forest behind a waterfall. There's a colonel, played by Woody Harrelson, um, who's hunting them. And in the process of hunting them, he kills Caesar's wife and son. Caesar goes on a revenge mission while sending the rest of the apes off to a safer place. Meanwhile, what has happened is that, and again, if you don't know the story, but the, the, the reboot plan of the apes started with the reason why Caesar, an ape, can talk and can lead the apes is because he was infected with a virus that gave him those abilities. But a side effect of that virus was, is that it was um, killing humans. But it seems that now in this movie, that virus that was killing humans has mutated in such a way that is leaving humankind unable to speak, also known as being mute, primitive, and kind of ape-like, without looking like apes. They still look like humans, right? Um, Along the journey of Caesar and a couple of comrades to go uh, and have revenge against the colonel, Uh, they come upon a little white girl who is mute. Later, they're going to name her Nova, which is a callback to the uh, mid-60s original movie. There was a white woman in that movie who was mute. She was a grown woman. She was called Nova by Charlton Heston's character. In this story, she's a little white girl. She's mute. And the orangutan, who's a, a good companion and confidant of um, the ape Caesar named Morris, uh, Maurice, Maurice um, shows compassion and they save the little girl and they take the little girl with them. Keep this in mind. The kindness of the apes is very much in opposition to the colonel and his militia. The colonel is actually killing humans who have been affected by the mutated virus. Because he's killing other humans affected by the mutated virus, other factions want to kill him. Other military factions want to kill him now. Um, When the colonel, um, later on the colonel, in the movie, the colonel actually captures all of the apes that Caesar, the leader, sent off to safety. He captured them, and he forced them into slavery in in a kind of internment camp. Uh, And he was forcing them to build a wall to protect him. Keep that in mind as well. I'm going to talk more about that later. Um, So he had these apes. He enslaved them or imprisoned them to have them build a wall to protect him from the other factions of humans that want to take him out because he's been taking out humans that have been affected by the mutated virus. Okay? Eventually, Caesar, the leader of the apes, is captured. The colonel tells him that his emotionalism makes no sense because it will cause his fellow apes to be killed by the colonel. So the colonel is essentially telling Caesar the ape, you're being driven by emotionalism here because you want to get revenge on me for taking out your wife and son, but you're not realizing that your emotionalism is going to get your fellow apes killed. Also, very strong point to keep in mind. The colonel also speaks of his own actions of killing humans. This is He's telling this to Caesar saying, you know, that they were infected, the humans were, by this virus that had mutated, and they were becoming like apes, the thing he hates most. Man, this is is so deep. Just keep these points in mind. Rewind if you have to, because later on I'm going to touch on about ten different points that all black folks who are watching this film should keep in mind as they watch the film. Anyway, continuing with the story... Uh, the apes later use guerrilla tactics to free themselves right as the opposing factions storm the camp, the internment camp where they're being held. Caesar was still on his quest for vengeance. He finds the colonel in a room somewhere, but the colonel has been infected 
with the mutated virus, he's thus mute, and he is somewhat primitive. Caesar sees this, spares his life, and leaves him that way. During the battle, humans, apes, and human um, ape collaborators die, but most of the apes survive the ordeal. The apes that survive, they head off to a desert to live in safety where humans would not find them. And that's essentially where the story ends. So I wasn't too spoilery. Um, You could still watch the movie because there's some nuances I intentionally left out from mentioning. Um, But I mentioned the key story so you can get an idea. And now I'm going to touch on to ten things. That you should look out for. And I might miss things too by the way. By all means. um, In the comment section down below. Let me know. What I missed. And. Add to. The list of things I'm going to. Mention off. So number one. As you heard. And as I mentioned. Tariq Nashi talked about D. Ray McKesson. From Black Lives Matter being. Uh, kind of being alluded to in the imagery in the poster for the planet for the war of the planet of the apes. Now, um, D. Ray, just a little backstory in case you missed it. D. Ray actually tweeted out something about it and later retracted or deleted the tweets, which I thought was a bit of a cowardly move. He should have stood on it. He should have stood on it. Um, people who were detractors to his statement and Tariq Nasheed's statement is, were saying that, well, if you look at the old movie from the 60s, apes in that movie were wearing um, blue vests or blue jackets as well. The thing is, in that movie uh, in the 60s, the apes were wearing blue vests for a reason. And it wasn't one ape. It was groups of apes who wore these jackets. In this movie that came out uh, today, or last night, in this movie, there is no real reason why only this one ape is wearing this jacket. Now, Whoopi Goldberg used her platform on The View recently um, to denounce D-Ray's original and now deleted tweet saying that he was making it all about him. Let me play... Let me play... um, the clip. Real quick. Yeah, take a listen. For the Planet of the Apes. You know, the new Planet of the Apes movie, I'm seeing that today, as a matter of fact. You are? Yes, I am. I'm so jealous. I know you are. You could go, too. It's you the could theater. go. Oh, is it in the theater? Okay. No, it's not in the theater, but I'll take you if you want to go. Thank you, Whoopi. But there's already controversy. It's insane. Yeah. Prominent Black Lives Matter activist, DeRay McKiss, McKisson, yes, yes. accused filmmakers of personally mocking him by dressing up an ape in a blue vest, which he's been known to wear. DeRay. You need to go back and watch the 1968 original and check out what the apes were wearing. This has nothing to do with you. This is a movie that was about what happens when mankind doesn't pay attention to environment, to how we treat animals and each other. That's what that movie was about. And at the end of the movie, when they're riding around and you realize it's here... That's what the movie was about. Get over yourself. Yeah. You know, I, I, um, I, I know DeRay, and I think he's well, done... Well, tell him I said. I will. <laughs> I think he's done incredible work Mm -hmm. um, as a social activist, and and I I, I was, I'm still confused as to what his tweets actually meant. They've been taken down. I wasn't sure if he was relating. What he said was, (laughs) y'all are, here it is, look, turn around. Um, hmm. Okay. But, 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 
Is it possible? No, it's not. <laughs> you know what? No, it's yeah, not. And I, don't play that with this movie. That's not what this yeah, movie was about. I, it's about. No, no, I mean, is it possible that he perhaps meant something else? Like what? What does he not? He, does he not speak English? He yeah. he wrote what he meant. I, I, it has nothing to do with him. It has I nothing mean, to do with black people. It has nothing to do with any of this. And yeah. stop. Quit trying to do that. Yeah. You're doing great stuff. Don't he screw is. it up yeah. by doing something dumb. So mm, Idris yeah. Alba, let's <laughs> talk about it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I know, I know. I, I want to talk to him about it because yeah, I, I'm very him. curious as to what he meant. <laughs> yeah, please call. Whoopi is uh, being ridiculous then. Uh, I'm going to touch on something about black women later that reminded me, of, that Whoopi reminded me of just now. Um, first of all, Whoopi needs to educate herself as to the origins of the story and the development of the original movies. The original movies were, in fact, an allegory um, about black folks and turning the tides, etc. So Whoopi needs to stop this. Uh, D-Ray, like I said before, I strongly believe that the representation of the ape in the blue jacket in this movie is a knock towards him. Um, The ape in the blue jacket in this movie is kind of slow, kind of dim-witted, kind of moist, definitely D-Ray from the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, um, they, they played him as like com- comic relief throughout the, the movie, so I think that's a way of uh, kind of saying that D-Ray is kind of a clown. Now, I don't know D-Ray personally. I, I've... I kind of follow some of the stuff that he does, but clearly these people see him as a clown. Okay? What was also funny about the about the ape in the blue jacket, I was sitting next to a kid. And by the way, black folks, when you go to these movies and stuff like that, please stop your kids from talking all the time. And grown adults are talking in the movie. That's really off-putting. And it's a part of a stereotype that's out there about black folks talking in movies all the time and stuff like that. Let's sit down, let's watch, let's internalize, let's think it through. If you have to talk and if you're talking to a child about what's going on on the screen, teach them something. Don't be talking foolishness all the time. But funny enough, this kid who was with his mom, I think, said to his mom, um, how is it that this ape is not seen by the humans? This ape in a blue fucking, a bright blue jacket is not seen by the humans. And that made me think. It made me think about the the real D-Ray. And the fact that he's always in this uh, blue jacket at these Black Lives Matter rallies. And I think, funny enough, I think... He wears it so that he can be easily identified. Because they've made him the face of Black Lives Matter. He's not really one of the creators of it. He's just become a vocal uh, person who's, who's in the group, and he's become sort of the face of, of it. And I really believe that the reason why he's sent out there, because it, it's been rumored, and I think it's even been proved, that he's been propped up by certain people like George Soros and stuff like that. And it, it, it seems to me that maybe he wears that jacket so that the authorities don't hurt him. And I think that's why he does it. But anyway, so number one, the ape is meant to be D-Ray. The, and, if that's, and if that's true that the ape is meant to be D-Ray, that means that the whole uprising thing is, is an allegory to... Um, Black Lives Matter. Number two, Caesar and the apes at the start of the movie live in a jungle. Now, if Caesar and the apes are black folks and they live in a jungle, what is that alluding to? Well, it has to be alluding to Africa. Okay? Number three, remember I talked about the virus and how it affects humans. The virus affects humans in a way that makes them mute. In fact, there's a little mute white girl um, who's found 
and the apes show her kindness. She's later going to be called Nova. And again, like I said before, that's a call back to the original movie in the 60s. That moment where the apes show her kindness and then take her with them as they go on on this uh, revenge mission, that highlights a few things about black people. You see, this is the thing about messages too, by the way. Messages go both ways. Okay? Messages usually have meaning in two different ways. Or warnings, actually. Have meanings for the person who's issuing the warning and for the person who's receiving the warning. The message of the apes showing kindness to this little white girl is a comment on black folks' weakness of always showing kindness, particularly to two groups, white women and white children. Okay? Black folks have a history of showing kindness to white women and white kids. On the flip of that, One message is, be careful of white women betraying us, because later on, Nova goes on to help the apes. Also, it's to say, uh, white kids can stray from the message of white supremacy if we're not careful. That's how I saw it. I saw it as, number one, these apes, like black people do, are showing kindness all the time, even in the face of oppression. They particularly show kindness to white women. I mean, black men have this thing with white women. Even black women have this thing with white women. When white women go out here marching, talking about feminism that doesn't give a shit about black women... Black women still go out here and march and talk about feminism themselves and all this kind of stuff. We show this kindness to this group, white women and white kids. The second message was, is also that the white feminine energy can calm the beast. Let me repeat that. The white feminine energy can calm the beast. That's also what you see in this imagery. This young white girl, even though these apes are on a revenge mission, they could have killed her too. Because they, not to spoil too much, but they killed a a, a, a white guy before. They could have killed her. But it's to show you how that white girl magic, if you will, can calm the beast, can calm black men okay number th- number what was that That's number three number four um i mentioned this before but um kindness and emotionalism was i think the fourth theme that we should keep an eye on when viewing this movie the kindness and emotionalism will be black folks's downfall in a battle with white power, white supremacy. You have to have a strategy or else blacks, all blacks will perish. And this is what the colonel, played by Woody Harrelson, was telling Caesar later on when he was captured. I could see you're emotional. You want to take me out. But what you're not doing is strategizing, taking a step back and plan, you know, make a plan. Because your emotionalism... It's not only going to get you killed, it's going to get all of your people killed. So there's a message there, and I hope black folks get that message. The fifth thing. Remember I said the colonel was killing all the infected humans who were becoming ape-like. Well, if ape-like means black-like, what does that mean for us? Then what is the virus? If the virus was making... The humans, and the the humans in this movie, if I wasn't clear about this before, the humans in this movie are white people. The apes are black people. The colonel is killing the infected white people 
who are becoming more like black people. That's because the virus is blackness or non-whiteness. Okay? And as long as this virus is doing that to white people, as long as white people are getting some blackness about them, that means there's a, there's a decline of white power. Okay? So as white folks are becoming uh, more black, either through uh, reproduction, either through embracing black culture, either through having black sympathy, the white guys in power hate them for it because they're becoming the thing that they hate. Okay? Also, let me say something about the colonel too. The colonel is very much like Trump trying to build a wall. Okay? If the colonel is like Trump trying to build a wall against his enemies, right? And the apes are the ones building the wall, enslaved, to build this wall. What is that a message to us about? We have to be careful that we don't become slaves again and building this wall for Trump. And that Trump point, that Trump point is going to come up again later. In fact, you know what, let me bring it up now. Number six, infighting is another theme in this movie. Again, the colonel, played by Woody Harrelson, is the leader of a faction that represents white people. Other factions want to take him out because he's killing these humans who are infected with the virus and becoming more ape-like, or in our case, embracing more blackness, or becoming more black. So who are the other faction then that's other white people so there's an infighting going on amongst white folks okay the key to it though is that these other white folks they're still racist too because when the white folks come to take him out in the final battle come to take out Woody Harrelson's character in the final battle after Woody Harrelson is gone and his his uh, faction has been defeated, they look over and see the apes and pull guns on the apes. So they're also racist. Even though they want to take out another white guy, another faction, they're all so racist. So what does that remind you of? To me, that message is a message of Democrats and Republicans. They're the same thing when it comes to black people. They're racist. They do their infighting amongst amongst themselves because maybe one person uh, does something to an ex, but that's between them. At the end of the day, they're still your enemy. Okay? And when you watch this movie, I dare you not to see this when you watch the movie. The next thing is, um, <clears throat> the next uh, concept this movie touches on a lot is sellouts. Coons in our case. In the movie, um, there are sellout apes working with the armed forces, okay? We have it in our world where coons are working with and for white supremacy, don't we? Now, something happens in the movie, all throughout the major part of the movie, there's a particular sellout who, at one point, he's being like the slave overseer whipping another uh, ape. And I'm going to talk about it in my next point, by the way. Um, And uh, Caesar is trying to tell him, just like we do with coons today, that this coon shit you're doing, when white supremacy is done with you, they're going to kill you just like they killed us. Okay? But this one particular sellout ape... has a come-to-logic moment later on in the movie, and he, the, the coon ape, actually um, takes out one of the militiamen who was about to kill Caesar. The message there is that sellouts ultimately aren't loyal to anyone. They're opportunists that can turn against you at any time. 
So on one hand, the message is that you could always get the coons to sell out black folks. But on the other hand, there is a there is a message to the power structure that says, but beware of the coon, because ultimately all the coon is, is an opportunist. Okay? And if things start to go funny, the coon who you've been using to oppress and to continue oppressing black folks, they can turn on you too. Again, I really would love to hear your comments after. Uh, after you've seen the movie, and you tell me if this is what you've seen as well. Number eight, a plan. I've touched on this before, but this has been touched on several times in the movie. You have to have a plan. When the apes executed a plan using guerrilla warfare to overthrow the enemies, they were successful. Remember what I said earlier about the colonel talking to Caesar, the leader of the apes. He said, your emotionalism will get you and everyone else killed. The message here, the message in that scene when the apes use guerrilla tactics to overcome, don't be emotional. Use guerrilla tactics and a code to get the oppressor off your backs. You have to work together. Okay? Number nine, remember, I think it was number seven, I mentioned about the sellouts, and I mentioned there was an ape in particular who was a sellout ape working with um, the militia, the colonel, who was whipping a uh, another ape. So there's this scene where um, Caesar, who had been captured, he's witnessing this sellout ape beat another ape with a whip, which, by the way, obviously that's slavery and black people, right? But Caesar stands tall and defiant um, when he saw this happening and saying, and he shouted out, stop. The colonel threatened Caesar's life. I won't get into too much detail about how. You go, go, it, go and see it and you'll, 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 uh, you'll recognize what I'm talking about. But the colonel threatened Caesar's life because he was insubordinate and because all of the other apes at the time, when Caesar spoke up, they stopped working. Um, when Caesar's life was seemed like it was going to be extinguished, a female ape, okay, follow me on this one, a female ape cries out, and begins to get back to work, prompting others, other apes around them to do the same. That is the black woman. And that is the black woman's historical role in um, thwarting, stopping, or suspending black uprisings and this is not this is not me trying to shit on black women here please don't take it this way i'm talking again don't be emotional i'm talking historic fact and i'm talking about how they view the black woman when it comes to any black uprising they know they can use the black woman again emotionalism they can use the black woman to thwart whatever it is we're trying to do. Okay? Like I said, history has shown us. In fact, in recent years, do you remember when Freddie Gray had been murdered and they had those riots in Baltimore? Remember the mother who went down to the riots? Her son was out there rioting and she took him and slapped him up on TV and they made her... They, they sensationalized her, this wonderful mom who went down there and emasculated her, her young son. That's what I'm talking about. This is what they know they can do. If they can make the black woman afraid, that can end uprisings. And I again, please watch the movie. Please tell me your thoughts on that. The last point, which is number 10. 
And I'm again, I may have missed certain things. If I did, forgive me. And in fact, at the bottom of this video, uh, I'm going to pin a post that asks, what were your thoughts of the movie? Do you have any other um, allegories? Uh, did, did you see anything else that I might have missed that can be a good message to black folks? And uh, the reason why I want people to talk about this, the reason why I'm talking about this is because I do, in fact, want black folks to wake up, not just be blind and just watching stuff for for entertainment. You know, they say that black folks watch the most movie, etc. I'm um, sorry, the most TV, etc. And I wonder if black folks are watching things that are building up their minds. And I... I, I kind of believe a lot of them aren't. I believe a lot of the love and hip-hop and all this reality bullshit and Kardashians, this and that. I think that's what a lot of black folks watch. And you're not watching things with your third eye open. So I definitely want folks below to comment what they saw when they went to see this movie after listening to this video. It would be very interesting to see. But the, the tenth point that I have... At the end of the movie, after the apes have freed themselves from bondage and uh, the colonel was dead, etc. And there's a whole thing I'm, I'm skipping out here because I don't want to be too spoilery. But the movie ends with them reaching a desert where they believe they can live safely and they won't be found by... Um, the human armies. When you look at the scene, you know what that desert is? It's a desert with like a lake or something in there. There's a mountain in the background. There's a couple of trees. When you look at the scene, those apes who, who actually is supposed to represent black people have returned to Africa. Now, I know at this point now you think I'm crazy. Go and watch the movie. Those apes have returned to Africa. Believe me when I tell you that. And I dare you to see that movie after listening to what I, I'm talking about here or even to have seen it without even hearing this and coming across this, this uh, podcast afterwards. The apes in the end have returned to Africa into a um into a, have have returned to Africa in a position of power and empowerment. That is a message to us. We as a people, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not ten years from now, it might be a generation or two from now, who knows? But eventually, we've got to get out of this. We've got to get out of this war, this jungle. We got to return to a place where they can't really get at us. But that involves being empowered. That involves being all in spiritually, mentally, emotionally, etc. Again, those are my ten points. But I could have missed some things in trying not to be too spoilery here. I really want you guys who are listening to go out, see the movie, come back and listen to this podcast again. And in the comment section below, I want you to give me your thoughts. It was, this, this, this could be a real good um, conversation. And if I do get enough comments, shares, likes, all subscriptions, all of the above, I will probably try to do a live show where you guys can call in and we can talk about it. You could be for what I'm saying. You could be against what I'm saying. Uh, all in all, the movie was a good movie. If you did go there with your third eye shut, um, you will enjoy the movie. But if you go there with your third eye open, you will enjoy it even more.
Okay? So, that's our show for today. Uh, make sure to like, share, subscribe. Right now we're trying to get our subscriptions on our YouTube channel up. Uh, we're trying to get to 100 for now. Um, please help us get there. All you got to do is subscribe. Um, it will help us out a lot to build the momentum of this show. Uh, on Until next time, this has been the Bit of Medicine Podcast, and it was a joy to be able to review this movie from a black empowerment standpoint for you. Until then, I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast with your host, Koku. If you like what you just heard, we hope you pass along our web address, bittermedicineblogs.com, to your friends and colleagues, and share our show to all your social media. Be sure to check out our archive section on our website for previous podcasts. This has been a KWAZ radio production. Join us next time for another session of the Beta Medicine Podcast. Follow us on Facebook at Beta Medicine Show, Twitter, Beta Meds, Tumblr, Beta Meds, Instagram, Beta Medicine.